Hi, my name is Jeremy Lickness. I'm a program manager for .NET Data. And today I'd like to show you how easy it is to get started with Azure Cosmos DB using the Entity Framework Core 6 provider. Let's take a look at some code. What I've got is a simple console application that defines a blog that has a collection of posts, a post that has some string tags associated with it, and then has a seed function that creates some seed data. And for that data, I have two blogs. I have my blog, with the first post that's tagged first and my initials, and a second post that's tagged second and my initials, and then a second blog. In the program, we use that seed data, that seed.data. We use a link query that has two parts to it. The first part grabs any blog that has at least one post with the second tag. So if the blog doesn't have any posts with, that are tagged second, it's not gonna return. So this filters the blog, but if we left it here, it would bring back all of the posts for the blog. So what the second part of this does is it projects the blog with just the posts that have the tag. So instead of bringing back all posts, we only bring back posts with that second tag. Then we iterate through and we print those to the console. Let's go ahead and run this and make sure it works. And here we see my blog and my second post. So how do we add this to our database? I have a Cosmos DB emulator right here that has no databases on it yet. And what I'm gonna do is a few steps. First, we're gonna install Entity Framework Core. I'm gonna use the Cosmos provider. We have providers for SQL, MySQL, Postgres, and many other databases, but Cosmos is the correct one for this. So we'll go ahead and install that to our application. And then the second thing I'm gonna do is add what's called a DB context. The DB context is to how we tell Entity Framework Core what classes we're interested in persisting to the database. So I'm gonna call this a blog context and I'm gonna add a little bit of code here. And so what this code does is it derives from the base DB context class, which provides all the services for interfacing with the database. It has a constructor that takes an option so we can change those options on the fly at runtime. And then it exposes this DB set. This is how we tell it we wanna save logs to the database. So this is really all that's needed to bridge that gap. I'm gonna go ahead and add one more method and this method is just to add the seed data to the database. So I've got a class that has seed data. What this does is it creates a DB context right here. It makes sure the database is created. And then it adds that seed data to the blogs and saves it. This is all that's needed to actually insert new items. We're adding the items to the blogs collection and we're saving changes async. Now we'll go to our main program and set up our connection string. So let's go to the top of this. And what I'm gonna do is pull my endpoint and key from the environment. I'm gonna use the options builder to tell it that we're working with Cosmos DB, passing that endpoint, the key and the name of the database. So we're just naming it after the blog context. I'm gonna seed the database, and then I have my existing code. So I'm gonna actually leave this, I'm gonna change this code that's doing the complicated link query. I'm gonna say await context logs, and we're just gonna take it to list async. So this is gonna grab everything if it works correctly. Let's go ahead and run that. And I'll bring my view over here so we can see it running. And you can see it's gone blog, first, second post, first post on the second blog. Let's actually take a look at our Cosmos DB emulator. Refresh, we can see it's created a database, a container, and it's populated it with our blog items. And we have the posts embedded automatically as sub documents within the blog 
and the array of tags inside the posts. So now let's recreate our link query. So I happen to know that this link query right now is too complex to be translated out of the box, which happens in some edge cases. But what we added in EF Core 6 is the ability to use raw SQL. So we can hit those edge cases and make them work. So I'm going to go to my DB context and I'm going to add a little snippet of code here that basically has a SQL statement that's doing the same thing that Link did, which is filtering the blogs based on the tag and then projecting the posts based on the tag. And then it has a wrapper method that takes any tag and projects it onto that SQL. So very straightforward from SQL raw is what we use. We basically marry the tag to the SQL and we say to list async. So let's go back to our program and let's change this to await context get blogs with tag filter. The tag filter is going to be second. And I'm going to go ahead and run that. Let it execute this query. Let me make sure it's running. And you can see we get the same result, my blog, my second post. That is how you use Entity Framework Core to connect to Azure Cosmos DB. I've got a link at the bottom of the screen that you can take a look at that will help you get started with the Entity Framework Core 6 provider for Azure Cosmos DB. Happy coding.